We have a lot of people joining today. And uh, can everybody hear me? Yes? Fine. All right. So uh, I want to welcome everybody to the, uh, the first, the kickoff meeting of the uh, Gold Ribbon Commission for uh, Year and Reuse. Um, just a little brief, very brief history. We um, have been meeting and discussing this group um, for the better part of a year and a half with Rich Earth Institute, um, Nutrient Networks, uh, Recode, and um, a handful of other people to try to get our um, resolve around how do we take urine reuse and make it legal through the regulatory pathway, pathways that we have to uh, follow. Um, and so that's what, what we've been working on that has led to this meeting and for everybody to join up and participate. I'm really super happy to see so many people interested in this and willing to participate, roll up their sleeves a little bit and uh, dig in and do a little bit of um, the actual work to get this done. Um, yeah, so before I get too far into it, I just wanted to, first of all, uh, do a quick acknowledgement that even though we can't be in the same room right now, we are all located on lands that were occupied by indigenous populations, and that our time here, wherever you are, is temporary, and the resources that we use today are barred from future generations, and I think that's especially applicable with trying to reuse the nutrients that we have that we take every day. Um, I also want to just, because we're going to be sharing things later on in breakout groups, uh, Recode um, uh, likes to put this discourse um, in front of everybody because this, we want to make this a safe, a safe environment for people to talk and discuss and uh, share their ideas. So just quickly read through uh, the discourse rules, which is to treat each other with respect. Keep in mind that everybody has their own truth. Listen without agenda. Be polite, courteous, and thoughtful. Refrain from interruptions. Affirm other speakers. Do not voice disagreement or use violent words. Instead, say something positive about the previous speaker, and then simply add your own thoughts. Be respect full of privacy, everything shared in confidence needs to be kept in confidence, and finally be supportive of each other. So with that, well, I'm gonna hand over um, the slide deck to Connor Lolly from Nutrient Networks. He's gonna tell you a little bit about what we found in the survey um, when we set this meeting up. Connor? Thanks, Pat. Um, can you hear me okay? You can do a thumbs up if that works. Cool, thank you. Um, well, first off, thank you all for, for joining us and for taking the time to take the survey. Um, I just wanna briefly share the results with you um, so that we all understand who we are as a group. Um, you can see uh, on this first slide, um, it's a pretty good uh, representation of, of different backgrounds. Um, you know, the most prominent uh, is, you know, researcher, scientist, or academic. Um, uh, and uh, followed by nonprofit um, and natural building community um, and advocates for urine reuse and nutrient recovery. Um, you can go to the next one, Pat. Um, and I'll just say it, it was really exciting to see uh, and read all of the responses um, and, and what a wide range of experience and perspectives there are. Um, I think having that diversity and viewpoints uh, and disciplines is going to be critical for the task at hand. Um, and I don't think we could ask for a better group uh, to kick things off. Um, so another result, uh, I think we have pretty good age distribution. Um, though if anyone knows any Gen Zers uh, that want to join, please uh, feel free to extend an invitation to them. Um, you go to the next one, Pat. I think the one area that we might be lacking in terms of representation um, that you can see here is, is, uh, is the BIPOC population. 
um, and LGBTQ. Um, so I'm not, I'm not, I don't really have a solution for that right now, but I'd be interested to hear if others have anything to say about that. Um, maybe we could talk about that offline and, and, um, and continue to try to be inclusive as we go forward in, in the process. Um, can you go to the next one, Pat? Um, it's, it seems like uh, uh, right off the bat, everyone's first choice for which, uh, which subgroup and committee uh, that you wish to serve on was, was well distributed across the, the four. Um, so I think that we can accommodate everyone's first choice. Uh, next slide. And I, I just wanted to return to, to that first uh, graphic because in, in reading through the responses, um, there was a bit more detail um, and I just wanted to quickly read through a, the list of, of, um, of, of people that, that are participating so that we have an idea of who we are. And so these are not, this is not a, a complete list, but this is some of the disciplines and professions that are represented here. So we have a physician, regulator, policymaker, a civil environmental and wastewater engineers, we have researchers, uh, especially those working uh, directly on urine and recycling um, of urine and fertilizer production. We have both community scale urine recyclers and home scale urine recyclers, a plumber, chemist, legal expert, farmer, gardener, ecologist, municipal planner, product developer, builder, student, writer, and professor. Um, so I think that gives you an idea of, of the range of, of disciplines that, that are all participating and contributing. So again, I, I don't think we could ask for a better group. Um, and uh, I look forward to getting to know all of you uh, throughout this process. And with that, I will turn it back over to Pat. Thanks, Connor. Um, and I'm trying to get my slides back. I don't know how I can advance them. Okay. Um, so when we started this process about a year and a half ago, um, we started in thinking that we were going to write um, sort of a template um, for other people to um, adopt and put into different building codes. Um, we still had a lot of, and we still do have a lot of barriers over what this group could do um, and get it to be more mainstream, um, which includes um, just a whole gamut of things. So what we want to do in the beginning here of this process is really to get um, a clear understanding of what our scope is, what our objectives are, and then from there, create some sort of normal operating procedures, which will then be used in the different processes that we go through, whether that's creating an ANSI standard, um, whether that's looking at a product standard, um, or whether that's simply a, a technical framework that then gets adopted. So um, I just sort of put these in these three columns um, to sort of get an idea of, of a roadmap of where we're going moving forward. So as we start sort of looking into this and unpacking it, we really have to start with that high level of um, what are we doing and where we're we going. So um, I put this together um, uh, for, the, for the summit that was just recently um, concluded by uh, the, um, um, this past summer. And so we had this problem statement that we don't have current building codes regulations that allow us to use urine um, other than just as sewage. And that's a big problem if you want to reuse it. So um, the goal then, this is my assumption, would be to create a science public health based technical document that specifies the safe collection, storage, transport and use of human source urine. So if that had to be sort of the, the upper level, and this is really something that we as a, as a group need to sort of unpack and really come to a decision that if this is our goal, 
for this committee, committee uh, commission, sorry, to, um, to agree upon. Um, and how that's gonna be spelled out is really looking at the scope, right? We have to make not only this problem goal, but we have to make a scope of where we need to delineate where we start our work and where we stop our work and how that feeds into our final goal. So to help sort of unpack this, I did some graphics and I did some explanation. So as we look at it, as we look at our scope and how to unpack all of this stuff, we first can look at, well, we can look at just the rules and regulations, right? So those are the rules and regulations around a national urine reuse standard. That could, be our, that could be our standalone goal. And that's really my assumption of what we're gonna do. We could have another one, and maybe this is a second goal or a phase two of this, which is a goal to solving some of the barriers, social barriers, maybe future ANSI standards or fixtures. It could be product certification. So if we're creating a product, is there a certification process for this? Um, you know, that may be a goal that we want to deal with with our scope. A third goal may be just opportunities. This commission could look at opportunities for best, best management practices for watershed health with, with urine or sanitation involved. Um, it could be the product certification or product development. It could be looking for funding. It could be all sorts of things. Um, really for this group and for this presentation and the past year and a half of work that we've done, we're making the assumption at this point that we're really focused on goal number one, which is the rules and regulations, creating a policy or creating a standard. So then we could use urine, reuse urine for beneficial use. So with that, I've taken this presentation and this commission, this is sort of how I assume we're moving forward. So in order to do that, we could do a, a few different things. We could first simply define urine as a standalone product and certify it through an ANSI process as a product. And with that, that product then would tie into existing rules and regulations. So the Unified Plumbing Code or perhaps the IAPMOS codes, it could inform EPA's on-site biosolids programs. It could um, fit in with non sewered sanitation standards. Um, so that could be one avenue that we go. Another avenue that we could do is create our own ANSI standard, right? So that's a, that's a, a technical document that outlines the requirements, the testing methodologies, the inspection procedures, uh, application rates to the ground. Um, really, it could be soup to nuts from, from P to farm, right, in the ground of what we're gonna do as far as a standard and how you do it to protect public health and how you use it as a beneficial use. It's a big stretch and um, with that, I think what we're gonna to have to do is narrow down and be very specific of where this standard would start and where it would stop. Because there's existing codes and policies out there and I'll kind of unpack those in um, at a later step. But really this number two um, strategy would be to create our own code that would define how you could use urine um, in a standard. And that ANSI standard has a lot of tooth and it can be adopted directly into um, other regulatory agencies. So we don't have to reconfigure it or rewrite any of these things. The last one, so that's our ANSI standard with our scope. Uh, the last one is just to create a framework or essentially sort of a recommendation or a template that then could be adopted by different regulators and adjusted to their regulated regulations and their frameworks that they have in place. So for example, different states in the United States have different 
uh, places and different regulatory frameworks that they have to adjust all of this stuff for. And so we could write uh, a simple, quote unquote, simple framework for them to adopt these things then. So it would be an easier process, it would be a quicker process, but it wouldn't have as much tooth and it wouldn't be really looked at in the same way that an ANSI standard would be looked at because it doesn't have the, um, uh, it doesn't have the voting, it doesn't have the technical background that's required of an ANSI process. Um, and it, in short, it, it's uh, not quite as strong of a document, yet I think it would work for our tools. Um, so really, I think those are the three different processes that I think we're looking at. And as we start looking at this, this is, again, going back to the same flow chart, right? We have these three different methodologies. Um, we have the ANSI standard going down, we have the ANSI product standard, and then we have this technical framework, all of them creating success at the bottom. And I set this up, the ANSI standard process is probably the longest amount of time and most complex methodology. Product standard would be a little bit easier, but staying, has the same rigor. Um, and then the technical framework is shorter, doesn't have the rigor, uh, but still could lead to success. Um, if we, again, look at this graphic, sort of starting to understand how this interacts, um, we can see where there's existing standards already in place. So um, the 2017 IATMO We Stand um, standard has documentations in place for urine reuse. And it goes to the point where you have it um, in a container, and it gives you some guidelines over how to reuse it. You also have in, at the federal level, and then at all the different states have their own sort of biosolids program. And that really covers um, exactly what it is, a biosolid program. So uh, waste that's being um, field applied um, and all the regulatory requirements that you need to comply with those systems. It doesn't specifically talk about urine or urine reuse as a fertilizer or as a beneficial use, but the program is there and there's regulation around it. Then you have a whole industry of fertilizers, whether they're synthetic or whether they're organic, um, that whole group is there. Uh, and then you have sort of the non-sewered systems, right? So those are the portable sanitation or on-site systems that are um, just standalone, that are not connected to a plumbing system. So that's part of the problem is that we're asking, for instance, like in the IATMO code, um, that covers plumbing systems only. And we're dealing with some, some cases where it's not a plumbed system at all. We're taking it away from the plumb system. So their jurisdictional sort of review um, really stops at the, you know, at the plumbing. Uh, at the same time, you have a lot of these um, non sewered systems that don't have the ability then to use it as a biosolid because the biosolids problem programs don't separate out the urine as a different biosolid. So what we're really trying to do um, then is to encapsulate our work in amongst these two worlds. Really, what we're trying to do is we're trying to take this scope and process, and we're really looking at one, a sewered system, and then stacked on top of that, a non-sewered system. So I think that's where a lot of confusion and complication arises. And so I think the way we should unpack this is really start looking at it like this, where we have our scope that we still have to decide upon, but we can start thinking about an ANSI standard that then references the existing standards, right? The normative standards. So IATMO has a standard for the using urine in a plumb situation, but doesn't take it beyond the plumbing. Well, our standard would just take it from soup to nuts and reference in what's already available in the ANSI standard. It would also reference in sort of the, the end part of it, which is the biosolid part, the land application part, into, as a reference into our code. And we would do all of this, and then we would 
also I see on the bottom there, an ANSI product, we could actually either as part of this commission or as a, another phase to it, certify how this is a product. If you're doing that sort of treatment and creating a product out of the urine, um, we could reference in that and how you are supposed to maintain how to develop this product correctly to fit in with our bigger ANSI process. So that's kind of the, the approach to it. Um, so it's a standard that we can develop dealing with both sewered and non-sewered conditions. We would go through an ANSI process, which is fairly lengthy. We, um, we have an organization, the Portable Association of the Portable Sanitation Association International, which Carlene Koss has offered her services to help administrate that process, the ANSI process, which is quite laborious, um, to help us through that and use their um, registration as, a, um, as an organization that really can give us that ANSI approval. Um, we also have a participant with IATMO, Dan Cole. Um, I don't know if he's on the call, but he's also um, been great and helped me work through how these things sort of fit together. Um, and I know we have some people from EPA and other state regulators that deal with sort of the more biosolid um, end of things. And so I really think that we have the capacity uh, here in the room today and with this commission to sort of dovetail all of these together. So what I want to do is just quickly tee up because uh, we're almost uh, at the half of the hour and we wanted to give uh, these groups 15, 20 minutes to be able to uh, quickly introduce each other to who's in the group um, and um, get to know each other and then actually get to start doing some work. So we created these four different groups, the executive, technical, review, and enthusiast teams. Um, I have sort of their loose definitions of what we assumed they would be. Um, we did this in such a way that we could um, rely on each other to sort of uh, help, help the, the group by breaking them down into this group into smaller uh, manageable pieces. So the technical committees um, could basically feed the executive committee, you know, the, the documentations that we need to support the decisions that we're having. At the same time, it's sort of a circular environment. We want each team to have a representative that meets back to the executive team. We'd like to have the executive team have this meeting be reoccurring once a month. So somebody from your, um, your breakout team should plan on meeting and giving the executive team sort of an update. Uh, each team we're assuming is gonna have a reoccurring meeting once a month. Uh, that's gonna be a little piece of homework that your team gets to work on. Um, we also want um, these teams to sort of look at what they assume our scope of work is gonna be. That's our first mission, is really to unpack where we think, going back to that graphic, where we think we're gonna start and stop our work. And what does that entail? And that's a really critical piece because that's the first piece that we're gonna need in order to kick off this ANSI process. And on the next meeting that we're gonna have, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that process if that in fact is what we're thinking and observing our scope is gonna be, is gonna, be, is gonna encompass. Um, so with that, what I'd like to do um, is just sort of look at what each of these teams is gonna look at. We're gonna, we're gonna try to have you guys structure your teams in such a way that you have one person reporting back. You may have a scribe, you may have co-leads, you could have uh, uh, however you want to break up your team. Um, so that's kind of a Q&A amongst your team. Uh, again, monthly recurring schedules with one person meeting back in the executive. 
15, uh, you're going to start looking at two different things with your group between really now and the next meeting. And you can start with this meeting, but I don't know if we have enough time. But start understanding that idea of scope and then also start reviewing some of the terms that we have. So when we start getting back together, our terminology is consistent. Um, what we mean by uh, what we're saying, um, whether it's for clarity uh, or whether it's um, to redefine what we're talking about. Um, so sometimes you know, definitions don't make sense for what we're dealing with. And so we're trying to move that forward with this discussion as well. So with that, I think we're ready to do breakouts. Um, and I think what we have here is a, is a, in the chat, if I'm not mistaken, which I don't have, is a link into, um, this PowerPoint here. And so there's a page for each team to, uh, take a look at and actually scribe in, uh, what you're working on. If you guys come up with a time that you're meeting. Uh, or anything else, uh, and then we'll come back with about 10 minutes left in the meeting, uh, so about 10 till, and uh, see if we can um, unpack what, what people were talking about in their groups. So thanks. thanks everybody for participating. Hopefully you got everything solved in that uh, 20 minutes. That would be great. <laughs> Um, so, um, I was in the, um, the meeting, uh, with the executive team and, um, we had we started in on some good discussion already. I was pleasantly pleased. Um, we tentatively are thinking about meeting, uh, regularly once a month on the third Thursday of the month somewhere around the time where this meeting is occurring, maybe a little bit earlier. Um, we also started to talk about sort of the, the different processes, the ANSI process versus um, other processes and, and thinking that maybe what would be the best um, strategy at the moment is to maybe do sort of a gap analysis of what existing rules and regulations are out there. Um, we also had a recommendation of maybe going through different scenarios, say an example of a farmer wants to use urine to fertilize a field, what sort of barriers does he run into? And or, you know, another person uh, that's doing a development, let's say, that wants to uh, keep all those resources on site. It's a residential project. Of, so on and so forth. So let's go through some more or less role playing and to find out where the rules and regulations are. But I think um, we really landed on this sort of gap analysis of, of um, looking at the rules and regulations sort of to inform us about how to come together on a scope and then define where our limits are as far as where do we start and where do we stop what we're working on. Uh, to complete our goal. So that's kind of where we're at. Uh, if somebody from the technical team could, could speak up, I'd love to hear what they came up with. Um, hi, so from the technical team, we went through our introductions. Um, and so we spent most of our time with that. Um, but both me and Ryan Holmeyer will be the representatives. And so we decided that we were gonna make a Google um, Drive or a folder for all of our information. Um, and we will work on it independently on there um, to see everyone's work. And then we will come together if anything comes up that we need to discuss. Anyone else from the technical team wanna say anything? We have a lot of international people, so it was going to be really difficult to find a time that worked for everybody every month. So this was kind of the workaround and to work collaboratively um, on, on documents together that way. Um, that's great. Um, actually, we um, set up our meetings and, and this whole process that we've been in 
um, with this commission is all we already have a Google Drive all set up. We have sort of a place just for technical information and sharing and really setting up, um, we talked about it as well, uh, setting up sort of more homework assignments. So we're, we're dealing with a shared document or shared folders in between meetings. And then at the meeting, we can actually have a little bit more um, dialogue and nuances that we need to deal with. So consistent with, with sort of how what we were talking about. Um, um, will you be sharing that folder with us? So we yeah, can so following the meeting, I'll send that out and, um, and have everybody have access to that. Thank you. Um, how about uh, somebody from the review team? I can report on that, Pat, because um, I was there and took the notes. And we have a rocking group of uh, people who have uh, quite a bit of experience in reviewing documents. And um, just we had a, a really good discussion. We introduced ourselves and then came up with some ideas for the scope, kind of clarifying different things that people needed to know. We wrote that in the, we wrote our bullet points in the uh, PowerPoint, so you'll be able to look at them later. And we uh, have not yet chosen a point person, but we plan to think about a doodle poll for that. That's it. Awesome, that's great. Uh, and then the last group, the enthusiasts. I can speak for the enthusiasts and I'm happy to um, have others chime in as well. We, we're a small group this time, and I, I look forward to perhaps others joining our ranks. And we spent most of our time just ideating excitedly about uh, how to engage people and uh, what are some frontline communities that we would want to potentially network with. We were imagining like building websites where people could play games um, like SimCity style about imagining a world of the future when all of this is already installed, help people visualize it, thinking about other ways to connect, gamify, uh, get people to their neighbors. We didn't really get to any of the logistical things. We just <laughs> did that brainstorming um, to sort of ground us in what the work might be. And those are in the doc, in the shared doc, so people can look as well. Wow, that website's in there? That, that's awesome. We built it. It was, it was actually <laughs> super fast. And um, Josh, Josh just was able to whip that up, so. Wow, well, thanks so much, everybody. Um, so we're just about at the, uh, the top of the hour. Uh, and before people have to sort of dash off, um, one, respect your time. And I think it's great that everybody's participating in this. We're, we're over the moon of how many people are uh, engaged. So um, thank you so much. Um, I think the next steps are going to be sort of setting out um, Google polls to the next meeting. Uh, and then maybe uh, with that poll, we'll put in um, some steps of things that we're working on. And then also in that, that next uh, email blast or poll, we'll put in where the shared document is, the Google Doc. Um, so everybody can take a look at it. Start looking through there. Uh, feel free to um, add questions, comments, either as comments or suggestions, uh, so everybody can see um, the questions and comments and, and be able to perhaps answer them um, a little bit more organically. Um, and then we'll try to administrate that as much as we can. Um, but feel free that that information is for this commission to use and to share and to uh, really make better, make it uh, your work and uh, your success. So uh, with that, I think, look forward to an email follow-up. Uh, and if there's any other questions or comments, the floor is open. Thank you. Nobody? Yes, yeah, so I not, not even Molly? I have a question. Um, <laughs> So we're going to meet in our groups. Are we going to set up a time to come together as a, a whole group at some point also? So that's a great question. Um, personally, um, anybody can come to a, an executive meeting to, to find out what's happening. Um, what we'd like to do is actually have a time um, that we have the other other groups report back to that executive um, 
team. And as far as having bigger meetings, uh, perhaps once a quarter, maybe we should have um, all the teams have a big um, meeting with all the members. Not a bad idea. Getting a lot of thumbs up, so maybe that's a good idea. I'm trying to be cognizant of everybody's time. So um, we can have a lot of meetings, but it, it gets to be a little bit much, especially since nobody's got this on their budget. So uh, I appreciate that. Okay. Well, thanks everybody. I appreciate Thank it. You. Be well, be safe. Thank you, Pat, for your coordination. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. We'll see you on. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wonderful Thanks. presentation, Pat. Thanks. Thank Bye, you. Thank you.